All right, everyone. Welcome to another show, another episode, another conversation that I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, yesterday, the closing ceremonies of the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris, France, um, occurred yesterday. So the Olympic Games for 2024 are officially closed. Uh, now we're on the watch for the 2028 Summer Olympics, which will be held in Los Angeles. And um, then we're also looking forward to the 2026 Winter Games. What we're going to do today, and you see our fancy setup here, um, conference room style, Stan Solo from the Solo Show and from Grand Circle Tour Podcast is here. We're going to recap the Olympic Games from the opening ceremonies some of the things we liked watching, um, some of the some of the things we possibly would like to try ourselves. Um, people always say they want to see normal people compete against Olympians. Here you go. Um, and then we even have some predictions for 2028 that deal with Disney and the Walt Disney Company. So, Stan, uh, welcome to the show. This is, did you know, this is your fourth time on the show so one more time and you join the five timers club i thought you said that last time i was on <laughs> i i i think i did but it was your third time on the show i went back and i went back and looked through and i'm like because i was planning i'm like oh this is going to be the fifth time i'll be able to give i have like a five timers virtual jacket if you will you can't really count it as an nft i'm sure that's what i was you getting it ready time, that the next time you'll be on it will be the fifth time. yeah well, I was I was getting the jacket ready, and then I'm like, uh, "Wait a minute! No, I only have him down for for three times." Uh, okay. You're probably so counting the times that the I next time, Maestro. So the next time you're on, will be five times, or maybe I will realize my mistake, and it'll actually be the sixth time. <laughs> or the next time, you either say, way, you'll get your. The next time you're on, you'll be on five times. <laughs> yeah yeah that's what you'll say next either time. way you'll you'll get your uh you'll get your five timers uh virtual jacket at some point oh uh, so real quick for um people that haven't listened to a show that you've been on before uh give us a quick rundown of what the solo show is and the grand circle tour podcast before we start okay so uh grand circle tour podcast it's a disney uh podcast uh we've been going for oh man quite a while now I, I don't know how many years six seven eight i don't know but there's seven of us uh we rotate who's going to be on the air uh because to have all seven of us on every show would be absolute insanity and we there's no way we could schedule it <laughs> so so we have three people on at a time and we take turns who's hosting and who's going to be like co-hosting and we, it's always disney um the solo show, uh, I do it basically, uh, I'm hosting it by myself, and I have guests on every week, kind of like what you do. Uh, so it's a different guest every week, and it's a lot of Disney, but not only Disney. Uh, we were, I know when Survivor was on, we kind of did all the Survivor uh, re recap shows. Uh, we did um, like the top 1,000, or not 1,000, that would be crazy, the top uh, 75 <laughs> movies or tv moments of all time uh, you and i just recently did the top uh sports movies we uh arm wrestled and fought over which the top 10 <laughs> were, were of all time were uh, by breaking it down and illuminating as we went so we have a lot of fun on the solo show so um and they're they're really really cool um i love listening to both of them um i like listening to I like listening to the solo show. I like being on the solo show. I also like listening to um, different, the different topics that people come up with on the Grand Circle Tour podcast because um, it's up to whoever is the host that week to come up yeah. with the topic and, and prepare their, their two co-hosts uh, with as much or sometimes as little information as, as they choose um, if they want to have fun with it. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, 2024 Paris Olympics. Um, let's start with just before we get into the opening ceremonies, just overall 10 to 30 second um, kind of perspective of the Olympics. 
what's your overall view of the 2024 Olympic Games? So, I, I, first of all, I'm a huge Olympic fan. Uh, going back to 1984, that's when I first kind of fell in love with watching the games. And every much, pretty much since then, I've taken the time off work or off school or whatever. Just, well, it's not so much school because I was, you know, he's graduating already, but taking the time off work, the two weeks off just to watch the Olympics, winter and summer. Uh, and I and I do that because no matter what time zone it's in, I can watch it. I don't have to. I can watch mm-hmm. it live. Because like, this time, it's starting at two in the morning when I was getting up to watch them. And then I, I don't, I, I, it's, it's a FOMO, a fear of missing out. I, I like to watch everything live. So these Olympics themselves, uh, I think the television coverage was absolutely amazing. Uh, the games, the games went without a hitch, uh, for the most part. You didn't hear mm-hmm. anything about about uh, you know drug issues or or uh, people not being able to make it to their venues. Uh, I think it was a very very smoothly run Olympics this go round. Uh, having said that, it wasn't the perfect Olympics. Uh, I think the opening ceremonies and the closing ceremonies both. They could have rethought some of the things they did. <laughs> I think not so much. I don't want to get into like the whole the part about people talking about their religion and all that, but just some of the choices they did for entertainment, I thought were were weird. And I get, that's the French France for you. That's French for you. You know, uh, they, they they are a little bit off as far as their entertainment goes. See, I my overview, like thirty thousand foot view of the olympics this was to me this was the olympics that we really needed as viewers it reminded me of 1996 olympics and the 2000 olympics that were that were really really good as far as just kind of that good feeling um 96 was marred because of there was there was a domestic terrorism there was there was bombing during the 96 olympics if you remember that Mm -hmm. 2000 in sydney um i don't remember major issues with coming off of the 2020 olympics which obviously were postponed and held in 2021 without very hardly any spectators um coming off of that it felt really really good to see an Olympic games like this. And you, you talked about, you know, controversies during the games, really there was, yeah, there were the controversies during the opening ceremonies that people misunderstood, like some of the, like the scenes that they were using. And, Mm -hmm. but I think the, I think the sin river, um, with, with the, the contamination in the sin river and that level of, uh, that was kind of the major controversy. Yeah. You know, like usually when you're watching an Olympics, at least here in the United States, we watch on NBC. And so everybody, if if people don't know, um, I live in the United States, Stan lives in Canada. And so when we talk about television coverage, that's really important because I'm watching on NBC. He's watching on CBC, although he does have the ability to watch CBC and NBC. I don't where I live. Um, but, you know, there, there weren't, usually when we watch in the United States, we're hearing a lot of, uh, like when it was in Beijing, uh, there were a lot of human rights issues that were being yes. discussed. Yeah. Um, this, these games just, they, they felt really, really good to watch. The stadiums, the venues were really, really full, which I think is a combination of one, Paris being a destination in itself, and mm-hmm. also people not being able to go to the Tokyo Games in 2021. Um, my, 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 like watching it, my reaction was, man, LA 28 they they have their work cut out for them because this was a pretty this was a pretty awesome games that we just had um so then let's get into specifically the opening ceremonies because because you talked about the opening ceremonies um i actually i really really enjoyed 
the opening ceremonies. Um, I didn't think I would. Um, so, so what were your impressions of the opening ceremonies? A- aside from the fact that it was it was raining the whole the whole time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can't control that. You can't control the rain. I mean, and they they took some gambles. They they, they gambled having the athletes come down the Seine River for the for the parade of the athletes, and to me, it didn't pay off, whether it was raining or not. Uh, part of the whole thing with the parade of the athletes is you get to see the different uniforms that they're wearing. You get to, mm-hmm. you know, you get to see them come in and, and we've been with, and, and you have the audience cheering. And yeah, there was people along the river and whatnot, probably a million people along the river from what I heard, but it just, it just felt lacking. Uh, the athletes kind of standing there as opposed to actually marching or doing the parade. Uh, there, a lot of the boats had railings. You can only, you couldn't even see what they were, what their outfits were. Uh, you know what I mean? It it it, it felt just bad. Uh, the there was like I said though there was a lot of good stuff like the opening when he did that that smoke explosion off the bridge that made the Paris flag yeah. the, or the French flag phenomenal. That that was so cool. Uh, I think Lady Gaga, why she was there is beyond me. I mean, she, she, I guess she's French, being French Canadian, <laughs> but I think Lady Gaga was stole the show. And I'm not I'm not Lady Gaga. Sorry, Celine Dion. I think Celine Dion actually absolutely stole the show. I'm not a Celine Dion fan at all. Actually, I think Lady Gaga did very, very well. Again, American. I guess there isn't too many internationally known French performers. And so maybe that's why they went to different places. Uh, I really enjoyed the metal band with the opera singer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was that was very, very cool to see. Uh, the torch run was was neat with the with the guy running on the top of the buildings, great concept, but it just didn't work. Yeah, that was really fun. Work. It just didn't seem to work. I'm not sure what what it was. It, it was great concept. It looked cool, but for whatever reason, it just didn't, it, it, it felt like it cut away from stuff for whatever reason. Uh, but what I did like was they used Paris as a backdrop. I, I've been to, I went to Paris mm-hmm. a little over a year ago. It's an absolutely beautiful city. It's probably, probably the most beautiful city I've been to. Uh, and I was really, really excited about seeing venues that I've visited before and, I, and I've seen before and seeing the city of Paris as the backdrop. You can't go wrong. Uh, I know there's a, there's a famous director in Paris and he's said that anybody can film a movie in Paris because Paris is just so beautiful that, you know, the worst director can make a beautiful movie in Paris. <laughs> and, and, and that's kind of what it was. Where I think they dropped the ball and I watched the the NBC uh, opening ceremonies or most of it are part of it. And all of the CBC opening ceremonies past Olympics, they gave all the television networks kind of like a script that would explain what's going on and what the, what the symbolism meant. I don't think they did that mm-hmm. this year because neither NBC or, or CBC kind of explained to us as viewers what the symbolism meant on everything. And they were kind of yeah. guessing a little bit and i think they were afraid of i think the, the the olympic committee or the paris olympic committee was afraid that that spoilers would happen and that's mm-hmm. why they didn't didn't send it to the networks like you know what everything meant so everybody was kind of just guessing what everything meant and and i think that was a de- detriment well and it, it did have um uh, it was live it well obviously there were parts that were Pre, pre, you know, pre yeah. shot, right? But as far they didn't have a rehearsal, which was very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. They, they, because it was going to occur on the river, they didn't have a rehearsal for it. Your point about the teams and the countries, the the really interesting thing to me was, um, because the size of different countries, you might have four or five countries on the same boat, on the mm-hmm. same vessel. And so they were not going in alphabetical order. One thing with the opening ceremonies is they always go alphabetical order with um, Greece always goes first. The host nation always goes last. So Fran- uh, France would have gone last. But after, aside from those, they always go in alphabetical order according to the host nation's uh, alphabet. And they couldn't do that this time, which was really, really interesting. No, I thought, I thought they uh, did that. that. Did, they, they went alphabetical. I, 
it didn't it didn't i mean it seemed like they kind of had to mix it up a little bit um like when i when i was when i was what or or again it that could have been nbc's coverage i never heard them say that that could have been nbc's coverage like yeah yeah, Dang, no, I'm pretty that, sure they were alphabetical or pretty darn close. Like they, maybe one country okay. out of place or something. But yeah, for the yeah, for the most part, they were all they were all alphabetical. Okay, because that did that went that kind of struck me as a little different. Um so yeah, I'll I'll have to go back and see that. Yeah. Another thing that was interesting to me is um and, and you mentioned it, there were a lot of to me, it seemed like an opening ceremonies that had a lot of French and American talent that, yeah. you know, Lady Gaga, um, I, it, it was, uh, we messaged about Snoop Dogg being a, a torchbearer. Yeah. And then at the end, there were a lot of international athletes and international personalities that were the torchbearers. And in the past, it's always been people from that country, from the host country, mm-hmm. I thought. And so Mm -hmm. that kind of struck me as odd, but also it did make me think like, well, you know, maybe this is the, in the spirit of here's of true, like Olympic unity, things like that. Um, So that, that was, that was pretty interesting. Uh, All in all, I really liked it. It was something different. I don't think anybody, other people couldn't pull it off. I think it was only, Paris is one of the very few places that could pull it off because they were able to showcase the, you know, the highlights of that city, which, which I think was worked in their favor. What did you think about the, um, what did you think about the Olympic torch, the location of the Olympic torch? Oh yeah. That was another thing that made no sense to me at all uh, uh, whatsoever. And it wasn't even a fire. It was, it was light and, smoke it was there was no fire in that torch (laughs) that that was around that balloon yeah it wasn't even flame it wasn't i mean okay i guess it's environmental i don't know they're not burning fuel i didn't understand that canada kind of did the same thing too during the winter olympics though uh the the where the where the torch was where the cauldron was wasn't near the opening ceremonies yeah uh, Wayne Gretzky, if you remember, got in the back of a pickup truck and carried the torch through the city to the pier where, where the cauldron was, mm-hmm. which, which is still there. You can go to Vancouver and still see that cauldron there. And uh, him and several other Canadian athletes lit the cauldron from there. Uh, so it's not unheard of to have it in a different spot. And, and it makes sense in the sense that I guess the hot air balloon was invented in, in, in France. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, you know, it goes back to their history. Yeah. So, I mean, it was fine, but it, 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 it's just weird, though. You know what I mean? Why, why didn't they have it, like, on top of the Eiffel Tower or something, have a flame going or something? The, I, I th- <laughs> after a little bit, like, at the end, because that's always so cool to me to find out what they're going to do with the Olympic flame. I still mm-hmm. remember an archer shooting a, a flaming arrow yep. through the cauldron in Barcelona. Yep. Um, and then, you know, Muhammad Ali lighting it in Atlanta. And mm-hmm. so I love seeing what they're going to do with the Olympic flame. And it was interesting to me that, and I, I actually, I started to really like it the more they showed it, that it was I don't know where, I don't know where in the city specifically it was, but it was, you know, not at the track and field stadium. It was in a way you could think of it as closer in proximity to all events, not just focused in one venue, which I thought was really, really cool um, to be able to do that. I thought it was interesting last night. We'll talk about the closing ceremony a bit. I thought it was interesting last night, how they just, how they um, extinguished the flame. He kind of you know, blew it out. That was one. That was one thing that I did not. I didn't realize that was happening when yeah. when Marshawn walked in with that. I didn't realize he had the flame, and and that's what was going to go on. But so the next thing, um, 
what what were some highlights from the competition for you over the the 17 days so the the, the games themselves or, or or the venues the 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 games themselves or i mean you could include venues in there because we we really didn't re- oh sorry yeah I, I skipped over that one let yeah what venues stood out to you First. Well, okay. So, so first of all, you you kind of you mentioned this already, but when you think about it, it's been eight years since we had packed stadiums in mm-hmm. in the in the uh, for the Olympic with a live audience uh, for for a summer Olympics. So that that of course was was something to see that we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, I mentioned my love of Paris, and one of the things I was really looking forward to was like the marathons and the things that were going to happen that I got to kind of see when I was in Paris. Um, the Eiffel Tower Stadium for beach volleyball. Could you get a better venue than that? That was amazing. Yeah, that was the best one. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was like far beyond. It's a big beach volleyball of all sports to to showcase. Yeah. You know, with the with the view of the Eiffel Tower like that. Uh, the walking and race marathon, as I, as I mentioned, the uh, fencing and and taekwondo happened in the uh, grand palace which is like a, yes. a museum what an amazing building that they had that in it was just the architecture inside yeah. and the way they had that kind of almost like a cloth roof or something like that uh yeah absolutely beautiful uh and then where they had the shooting and the archery and all that was kind of just outside of the uh it's called um infidels or infidels which in french yeah. i think means injured uh, and it was originally built to be is a hotel infidels, I think, which originally was built to as a hospital for people that were injured during the war. Uh, and it was it's a massive, massive building. It's now actually it's funny they didn't mention it all during the war museum, which or during the um, Olympics, which makes sense. But it's actually a war museum now, uh, mm. <laughs> where they it's filled <laughs> with with suits of armor and cannons and and stuff like that. Uh, and it's also uh, the Napoleon uh, Saint Napoleon. Uh, his tomb is in there, in that in that building. Okay. Uh, okay. But again, beautiful grounds, absolutely beautiful grounds. Yes. That that they had like the shooting and that happening. Uh, how about you? Well, I I actually when you right before you said that, I had looked up on my phone to, to try to get the name correct about the fencing venue, the grab pal. It was it was amazing. Mm-hmm. The that imagery, that and the beach volleyball because i watch a lot of beach volleyball I, I i like watching that sport in particular and those two venues were amazing it was so so cool to see those and when they would show when they would show the the outside view of venues so like if you know you're watching like uh volleyball indoor volleyball but they would show like what the building actually looked like. A lot of those yeah, the, buildings the drone so shot. Cool. Yeah. And, and what was really cool about Paris and, and will be the same in LA, the IOC has made a concerted effort, at least on paper to show that countries and host cities are not having to spend as much to build new venues. Um, mm-hmm. So I think in Paris, it was something like 90 or 95 percent of venues already existed. That's what it's going to be similar to in L.A. Um, and so that was pretty. It was really, really neat seeing how they used a lot of these. Buildings and and, and highlights of the city for these games, that, that was really, really cool. Um, and even going back really quickly to. The opening ceremony, like with the how they used the Louvre with um, the the person who was running with the torch, um, mm. which that that reminded me of, like that reminded me of Les Mis. That's that was what always popped into my head is like that that person looks like they're from Les Mis, and then they they actually did like play something from you know they had a portion of the opening ceremony about that, um, but just the venues, yeah, the venues were so so fun what they were able to do with them. Uh, I don't know if, and on CBC, if you saw a lot of coverage from Tahiti where they did the surfing, did you see a lot of that? I, I watched it on, uh, we have what's called CBC Gem. 
So they, they yeah. stream every, every single sport uh, live. Uh, so I actually flipped over so, to CBC Gem and watched some of the surfing on there. Did, um, and I, I watched very little of the surfing competition. But one thing that was happening in the United States is um, Colin Jost, who, who's a, he's a writer for Saturday Night Live. He does the Weekend Update. Um, he's one of the anchors for Weekend Update. He was the correspondent in Tahiti. And um, it was very, very funny. Like it was, it was hard to, it was hard to tell if he was constantly doing a bit, um, a comedic oh, bit, no. or like where that, where that stopped and where he actually reported on. Because he actually, it was like the first day there or something. He is a surfer, so he was going out surfing with some of the contestants for stories and he mm -hmm. cut his foot on a coral reef and so the rest of the time that he was there he was having to be treated for like first a cut um which so one of the first correspondent interviews he did he's talking about they're asking how he is and he's talking about how he has to keep walking around this yard that he's in because if he stops the ants are going to get in his wound and that's not good and then he pans he has the camera pan around and there's probably 12 chickens walking around in this yard with him and it was just it was really really funny the way and then the it was a beautiful setting uh but really really funny the way that like he would interact and the settings they showed him in like mm -hmm. a couple times he he would do interviews like with a laptop sort of like we do sitting on top of uh like a grill or or a uh or a or an ice chest and they like the camera would pan away to show that and so yeah. that that was really really funny to to see also um so yeah now let's get on to the competition highlights what were some yeah. of the the things that stood out to you so so being canadian obviously i'm more interested in in a lot of the canadian stuff uh but i'm interested in in a lot of a lot of the uh, uh olympic stuff uh, Summer McIntosh from uh, Canada, 17 years old. She she ended up being our flag bearer. Uh, we have a male and a female flag bearer. She was the female flag bearer. She got three golds and a silver in the pool at 17. Mm -hmm. She's going to be gung ho for uh, for LA. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with her. Um, Canada's got its first ever medals in fencing, which was which is something cool to see. I was surprised that the rowing wasn't in the Seine River. It almost mm. would have made more sense to have the rowing in the Seine River and then to have the, the swimming events not in the Seine River. But I guess they, there's mm -hmm. so much tourism involved, people riding up and down the Seine River, plus they do a lot of actual ships going back and forth, that I guess they, it wouldn't make sense logically to have it tied up for two weeks like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I was kind of surprised to see that. Uh uh, St. Luca, the, the country St. Luca, got its first ever mm -hmm. track medal in the uh, women's mm -hmm. 100 meter, uh, her first ever uh, track medal, and it was a gold, uh, which is great to see stuff like that because these countries that don't normally do well in these sports are doing very well. Uh, another highlight for me, uh, I'm not sure if you saw this one or not, but it was the gold medal match between Korea and USA in archery. Mm -hmm. So, so these guys over the course of, of the how many days that they're competing, they probably shoot about a thousand arrows. <laughs> so it came down to the gold medal game between the American and the Korean. And it ended up being a tie. So the way they do the tiebreaker is they each get one arrow and whoever's closest to the center of the target wins. It was okay. half a centimeter difference <clears throat> in the <clears throat> end that the, and the Korean got the gold. Like, Talk, I'm out the edge of my seat watching this, and this is archery, yeah. like, you know, it, it, it was so neat. Uh, Canada got his first ever gold medal in hammer throw, uh, and he ended up being being the other uh, flag bearer at the, at the closing Olympics. Uh, the the uh, pole vault, did you happen to catch the mm -hmm. final in the pole vault? Yeah. Yeah, I, I watched the men's and women's pole vault, and that was incredible. Yeah. Uh, so the entire stadium of um, how many people does that uh, stadium hold? I think it was 72,000 seats yeah. in that stadium. The entire stadium is watching this one guy trying to go and break. He already had the gold, 
but now he's going to go and try to break the uh, world record for the uh, highest yeah. uh, pole vault. And yeah, he did it. Uh, the young guy from from Sweden, uh, Ahmed Dupantis, is that something like that? Yeah, I think I think that's how you pronounce. It. Yeah, uh, we kind of talked a little bit about this beforehand. The women's four by one hundred meter relay. Uh, half the track was in the rain, <laughs> in pouring rain, yeah. and the other half the track was dry uh, because the rain was coming down. And the way that stadium is set up, it's hollow in the middle, and then there's like an overhang. Uh, so that was really cool to see. And USA won the gold, and uh, Richardson was in third place when she got the handoff with 100 meters to go. And wow, she put on the jets and, uh, yeah. and to win the gold. And, and the Canada did the same thing with Andre de Grasse. He got, he got the, uh, the, the baton. He was in third place when he was handed the baton. And these are, every country's putting their strongest runner in the anchor leg. And for them to come from behind in 100 meters to end up winning the gold is, is just phenomenal to see that. Uh, and the other one, Oh, okay, I got I got two more. I'm I'm sorry if I'm taking all, all of yours. I'm not sure if we should have went back and forth. But <laughs> <laughs> I got I, I do have two more. Uh, this one was a this was. Uh, I'll do I'll save this one for the end. China, in the medals in the diving. Uh, China got eight gold medals in in diving. Do you know how mm -hmm. many all the other countries combined got? Well, they swept ever they swept the gold medals. Yeah. Yeah, and so diving. the rest of the world got zero gold medals. Well, China got yeah. eight. <laughs> uh, and that's the first time that happened in Olympic history, where one country swept every gold medal. Did you did you see the 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 woman diver? I can't remember if she was from China. Um, did you see there? It, I mean, it went viral. Off of the ten meter platform, she. Did not make a splash. Yeah. Did you happen to see that? It, it was like as if the water Just, forgot the splash. <laughs> I mean, like, it's so incredible. I watched that probably 20 times. And I'm like, if you would have dropped a basketball off of the 10 meter, it would have made a bigger splash than that. Yeah. That was just incredible the way she did that. And, yeah. and what's so cool is, like now with the camera angles, they'll actually show underneath the water. So you can see mm -hmm. when they enter the water, then they start curling at that point. You know, like they'll they'll kind of curl up so that when they enter, they're straight. But as soon as they go under the water, like they're they're moving their arms and and trying to kind of flip over, which is what causes those those bubbles, uh, kind of mm -hmm. that bubble burst afterwards. The, and but yeah, that was that was incredible. Um, yeah. And and yeah, the the I mean the the gold medal sweep, which is you always expect that China's going to do very very well in diving. Um, anytime a country has a eight for eight gold medals, I mean, I'm not sure that's going to happen again. That's pretty that's yeah, pretty special doing, right there. Their program is doing something right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then this was this was actually. Uh, you, you, I know you said you enjoyed watching the beach volleyball, uh, the women's uh, gold medal match between Brazil and Canada. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you did. You catch that one? I didn't. I don't think I saw the gold medal match. Okay, so this is unheard. It, it's very rare in beach volleyball, in particular, for for the competitors from the opposite countries start arguing with each other. I did see that. No, I, I yes, yes, okay. I saw that. Go ahead. Yes. So, so, so the Brazil, uh, to me, I'm watching the replay, to me, it looked like the Brazilian uh, player said something to the Canadian player that she took offense to. And they were face to face net be, on each side of the net, basically yelling at each other. Uh, then the other, there's only two, two uh, players in volleyball in each team. And they started kind of yelling at each other and trying to almost break it up. The officials came out onto the, onto the sand and they were like, ladies, ladies, you, you know, you got to break this up. And it went on for for a while. Uh, so they finally went to their own corners. Um, they can't, I don't know. I, I think Canada got the serve, but they shouldn't have. I think it should have been Brazil's ball. I, uh, I think I think that's what it was. Yeah. Or or maybe Brazil got the ball. I can't remember exactly what happened there. But what happened was the the whoever was in charge of the music 
uh, yeah. at the at the at the beach volleyball, started playing uh, Imagine by John Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as the players heard that, they both all four of them had a big smile. They kind of saluted yeah. the, the 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 guy that's in charge of the music. And everyone living in peace, uh, you know. Uh, world yeah. In peace. And and it, he didn't stop it. He kept it going. And the whole audience, the whole crowd in the packed yeah. stadium started singing it and kind of putting their hands up in the air and rocking back and forth to John Lennon's Imagine. Uh, I think that was probably my favorite moment of the entire Olympics was, was that, yeah, the, that the was sound a... guy playing that song on purpose. You know, he did it on purpose. Uh, he and, and that and very well, uh, you know, very quickly uh, thought to do that. Yeah, that was such a cool moment. And like, uh, one thing about beach volleyball is, uh, I'm I'm plugging in my power source. That's why it looks a little strange. Um, they they do have at beach volleyball events. They'll have a DJ. Mm -hmm. um, they have like it's it's this very party like atmosphere. And so yes, that was that was a favorite moment. I, I when you when you said it and you started talking about it, um, I don't remember much about the actual match. I remember that part uh, yeah. where with because that was that was actually probably two or three minutes after I tuned in to that one. I saw that argument and I was like, whoa, that doesn't happen at <laughs> Olympic. That doesn't happen at in beach volleyball. And then yeah, yeah like here in hearing the music and then them talking about it. It's really, really fun. Did you, do you have any other highlights? No, that was, that was kind of, kind of it. Uh, Brazil won the gold. Canada got the silver, uh, which was, which was uh, Canada's first medal in beach volleyball for women. Uh, only second medal yeah. ever in beach volleyball for Canada. So um, yeah, good on them. I think the, for me, uh, one was seeing, I, I, I mispronounce his first name. If I try to say it, Marshawn, um go four for four gold medals in the pool that was really cool mm -hmm. um because well, yeah. he he did that in front of his home crowd uh i mean he did that in front of uh the french president you know showed up to do that i think and what was really cool as, was when he did the butterflies and as he came up the crowd would cheer yeah. as he was coming up yeah. which kind of helped i think that helped him i think that helped him get a a, pat, a, a flow going because the other athletes what, were off that that Cheer, yeah, and I mean? that's that's the thing when you when you go to a swim meet, it's so funny to listen during the butterfly because all the cheering, like you know, people are cheering when they're swimmers above the water, but mm -hmm. you're cheering for your particular swimmer. Yeah, and so it's just this cacophony of noise. For him, it was like everybody is just regardless if they were. French, if they were from another country supporting another swimmer, it was like people just realized this is something special. We need to, like, we're going to be on the same page for this. So, like, all the cheering was coming when he was above water, which was, which was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, I think as, as watching from the United States, um, what Simone Biles did was really, really mm -hmm. cool. Um, mm -hmm. She's known as, you know, one of the greatest gymnasts, if not the greatest gymnast in the United States. Uh, what happened in it was it was especially nice to see because of what happened in the Tokyo Games. Yeah. Um, with with her pulling out of the competition and then that leading to important conversations about like mental health with athletes. And and after that is really when. Uh, like. Michael Phelps came out and started talking about like the the pressure he always felt to swim mm -hmm. and all of these other athletes started talking about this. And so it was that was important. It was really, really fun to see her kind of get her due um, in these Olympics. Um, I did one thing I enjoyed toward the end. Um, I well, I always enjoy watching swimming and in the United States. There's a big swimming rivalry with United States and Australia. And mm -hmm. so seeing those two countries, um, Australia, Australian men 
did better than the United States men. The United States men didn't do very well at these games. Um, the United States did end up um, eking out a, a gold medal victory. I guess I should say they eked out the, the gold medal lead over Australia um, at these games. And I can't remember how many medals they ended up with um, with with Australia. Um, but it was very, very close. And it's fun to watch that type of stuff. Yeah. The an, another thing that was really cool to me um, in the United States in particular, when you watch men's and women's basketball, um, we were talking before we recorded, it, it's this anticipation that if you don't win the gold medal, something's wrong. Um, and especially with the, the, the women now, they won their eighth straight gold medal. The men ended up winning their fifth straight gold medal. But what was really, really cool to me was the United States did go through a period of time where they didn't, they first, they lost a game in Sydney. Um, and then they did not win a, the gold medal in Athens. So 2008 was kind of seen as like, we need to take this seriously. And, and that was what was called the redeem team. Um, but when they didn't win a game in Sydney, or when they lost the game in Sydney, and then when they didn't win the medal in the gold medal in Athens, a lot of people started talking about how the NBA players just didn't care, and it just mm -hmm. wasn't important to them. And what was really, really cool to watch, especially in the 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 Saturday fin the men's final game, was just the joy that those players showed. And I commented on it a few times during the game when I was watching with my family. I said, you know, these are multi-billionaires and they have everything, like they are celebrating this, like this is, you know, one of the biggest accomplishments of their lifetimes. And, and, and then they said it was, I mean, if you, if people listen to Steph Curry talk after the game, he said he had played in some pretty high profile. He had done a lot of things in basketball, but this ranked up there with the very best of them. Um, it was pretty cool. And and so that was fun to see. That was refreshing to see um, film be able to do that. Um, along with those, um, I, I enjoy watching, getting the chance to watch some of the sports that you typically don't get to see. Um, so I liked watching the little bit I was able to of the, the kayak cross. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't know they had that in Tokyo. That was a fun event to watch. I love watching snowboard cross and ski cross in the winter Olympics. So the fact that they had a competition like that, um, was really, really cool. Um, you should explain, uh, I'm trying to be familiar with the, uh, with the uh, cross is the, the kayak cross because it is so much fun to watch. <laughs> Yeah, so typically when when somebody does the kayak course, it, it's a it's it's an intense course by itself. Yeah, it's but a, a person is, yeah, they're they're going one at a time, and you have to go through a certain number of gates, and you have to go in the right direction. Some of them you go straight, you'll have to veer and go uh, through, but you're going straight. Um, there are some that you have to actually kind of loop back around. So it's incredibly difficult because you're going against these rapids that are pushing you um, really, really, it makes it really, really difficult. <laughs> the kayak cross is they dump four people in that course together. I literally, mean, they're like on a platform <laughs> and it's, it was like a 10 or 12 foot drop that they just like, they're in this gate and then the gate drops and they just drop down into the water and they're a, I mean, they're, they're pushing each other's boats. Uh, they, you're, I don't think you're, you're not allowed to hit somebody with an oar, but like they're, they're able to like try to get in each other's way and, and like push their, their kayak to the side. And they're having to go through all these gates while they're doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, it made for some really, really fun viewing. I, I have always wanted to try a very watered down version of a kayak course. And by that, I mean an extremely watered down version, <laughs> like maybe absolutely no rapids. <laughs> yeah, a lazy river or 
um, like turn down the rapids to a level of one and don't make me worry about going through gates. Like I want to, that's, that's what <laughs> well, I'm talking you gotta about. you got to go through the gates. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that it was, that was a lot of fun to watch. Um, a new sport this year, um, breaking, they had, they had break dancing at the Olympic games. Um, and Canada won the gold medal in breaking. Uh, what were your impressions of, of the breaking competition? That is such a silly sport. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and, and the commentators at CBC had, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> for whatever, the other thing too is, uh, as much as I love that the television coverage that they had, I found that I think the, the commentators were in open air and they got all the ambient sounds with, with them. So in breaking, you got the music playing, you got the crowd cheering, and then you got the commentator. It was, I found it very, very hard to hear. I'm not, maybe my TV settings are wrong, but I found it very, very hard to hear any of the commentators and pretty much all of the sports. And that's, it was quiet going on like golf mm -hmm. type of thing. But, uh, the CBC commentators were just hilarious uh, during, during this. Like they were, they were, uh, yeah, it, it, it was so much fun. But I, I'm, I mean, I'm glad Canada won. Um, they're going to be the champions next time because it's not coming back for LA. Mm -hmm. They already said it's not coming back. So they're going to maintain their championships for the next Olympics as well. The, uh, but yeah, it, it's silly. It, it's silly. It really is. I mean, yes, you have to do certain certain attributes like you have to uh, you start off standing up and you do a few moves standing up uh the music is randomly picked they don't get to choose their own music and the routine you do has to match what the music does like you can't be be doing one two three four when they're playing one two three one two three and you're doing one two three four it doesn't work um and there's certain moves you have to be able to do you have to be able to do a pause move where you where you spend like mm -hmm even if it's like a half a second type of thing where you're not moving. Um, and the more difficult pause move you do, the more points you will get. So th there is actually point system to it. And it makes sense once you understand it, but it is silly. I, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What did you think of it? it? It, I watched the, I watched one or two preliminary rounds um, or battles and then the gold medal and the, the bronze and to me everybody looked like they were doing well uh, not everybody there there was one there was one routine that went viral for for the wrong reasons <laughs> but um every, like it was the funniest thing to me was somebody would finish and i'm like oh they've got to win this one and they would be the loser oh uh, really like see i the, was really in, good at picking the winner i was very very good at picking the winner well, in the bronze medal battle, I don't, I don't think I saw the whole thing. I saw the United States won. I can't remember what country they were up against. Do you remember? Um, no, I, I can't. Don't. But the person who finished fourth, I saw most of their routines and maybe only one of the United States dancer. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, they were like spitting on their head and I'm like, this guy's got to win. Yeah. And then the United States won. Um, another, so it, I mean, it was, it was fun to watch uh, for a little bit. It was definitely interesting to say like there was break dancing in the Olympics. If it never happens again. Um, one thing that's interesting, it does like the ancient Olympics. They had artistic events um uh, like that like like trumpet playing uh flute playing things like that that they, they those were part reading. of the olympic games yeah they had poetry yeah, reading poetry reading. So, the events. so this kind of did to me in a way harken back to some of the things that like were included in the ancient olympic programs and, and kind of get at that uh one more thing that i wanted to ask you about was uh in, in the Tokyo Games, they added rock climbing. And I think in the Tokyo Games, it was only speed climbing. They had speed climbing, bouldering, and then combined. What did you think of, did you get to watch much of the speed climbing? 
the for speed sport climbing, climbing is it, yeah this does yeah i think it's called yeah i think it's called sport climbing is that what it is uh yeah that's phenomenal to watch like, yeah that is so cool and so that was another every time i watched i mean you know we actually went climbing at a rock gym a few weeks ago and it, it's incredibly difficult I, I i i did rock climbing in college it's very hard mm -hmm. um i was not good at it at all and watching these people go up the wall i mean the men were getting up the wall in less than five seconds oh yeah, yeah. it's just incredible i'm like they're not even they, they're not even climbing like it's just like it's just like spider-man going up the wall that's mm -hmm. and so that was another sport also watching me watching it it always looked like the person who ended up losing was going to win um which like was so interesting that i mean that's obviously the reason they had the technology because me watching like i always thought the the loser of the bout won um so it was it was pretty it was pretty fun to watch the the combined was a little different because the little bit that I watched, there was a lot of falling. Um, I don't know if you watched that, like yeah, it, where it they was, were trying to boulder and minutes. everything. It was five minutes, and they would go on one boulder, and then they would reach to the other one, slip and fall off, and then they would try again, yeah. and they would slip, and they did that for five minutes. It was kind of like the skateboarding was like yeah. that, where they where they yeah. they tried to do a stunt and they would fall off, and they would go and try it again, and later on, and they would fall off, and you spend a half hour watching this guy fall off the same over over again <laughs> which i will say for anybody who has never done rock climbing those handles if you can even call them that that they were using those are not the handles that you would go to a rock climbing gym yeah and climb on unless you are an elite athlete like these i mean they're hanging on to like basically like a almost like a semi a round semi ball sticking out of the wall that they're yeah. like hanging on to, which was incredible. Um, but next let's, let's, let's talk about the TV coverage. Um, I really thought the TV coverage from the NBC side was very, very interesting. Um, I liked it. I talked a little bit about Colin Jost's interactions. Um, this year, NBC went in heavy with um, Snoop Dogg on their coverage. Mm -hmm. And I had seen somewhere during the games, toward the end of the games, um, that it, the figure he was paid per day to, to help promote the Olympics. Um, it was, I, the figure I saw said $500,000 a day. I don't know. Wow. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen like the, you know, the, the behind the scenes or the, the actual ledger on that, but um, it was so interesting as an American to see that. Um, and it was really, really fun to see his interactions with a lot of the different athletes. Um, Martha Stewart showed up at one point, they mm -hmm. went to equestrian, they went out to eat. Uh, because him and Martha Stewart have they've had a long lasting relationship, um, but it's it it was it was pretty fun. What did you think of the television coverage? So so CBC focuses probably about ninety eight percent of their coverage on sport. They don't show very much of the city. They don't show very much of of, of people, uh, and and it's sad. It, it really is. Um, whereas NBC they have a lot more fun with it. You got Cookie Monster running around Paris, uh, mm -hmm. recording recording stuff. Uh, Snoop Dogg, like you said, uh, Martha Stewart, uh, um, who was it? Did the the uh, closing ceremonies? Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy uh, Fallon. Was part yeah. of the closing closing ceremonies. That's a lot of fun stuff. Uh, they were going to these little bistros, which which is I want to see these different things. Especially, I yeah. watched the live stuff from two in the morning and until until four o'clock in the afternoon. So for the primetime, CBC is rebroadcasting the same stuff. So usually for primetime, I would flip over to NBC because they had the fun stuff. You know, they were mm -hmm. they were showing the, the French bistros and 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 have doing uh, champagne tasting, 
and, and, and whatnot and showing the city a lot more, whereas CBC yeah. did, really drops the ball on that. Uh, so I guess if you're into the sport, CBC probably was a better coverage. <laughs> and CBC shows a lot of live, live stuff. Okay. Uh, whereas I find NBC, it's a lot of pre-recorded, probably depending how the Americans do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll go yeah. back and show it. You know, if if they went in, if they went in cycling, they don't show it live on NBC, where CBC will show it will show it live, uh, and then they'll they'll flick over, uh, you know, and yeah. re rebroadcast it on NBC. Um, and, and we also have like in Canada, we have like the like, uh, TSN, which has five channels. So if there's two big major events, marquee events happening at the same time, TSN will will pick up one. Uh, and then we also okay. have the sports network, and and they'll pick up one, which they're not associated with CBC at all. They just help out by doing that. And then, like I said, we have CBC Gem, which shows absolutely everything, and live streaming okay. on CBC Gem. And then you can go back and rewatch it uh, again. And see, that's what uh, in the United States, yeah, there were like NBC, a lot of replays. You could watch things live during the day, but there were that's where prime time was. Um, the linear television stations like USA. E, which stands for entertainment. I think CNBC had some USA network. They would have live things during the day. Um, but Peacock, the streaming service for NBC and Comcast, that's where you could watch everything. Yeah. And that's actually where I ended up watching a lot of events uh, because it was when Peacock launched, they launched right after Disney+. Plus. Now, they were going to launch and I think – it was supposed to be like April or May 2020. Well, obviously we had a huge pandemic going on at that time. So the launch got, it got moved back, but their big ticket when they launched was going to be, we're going to show the Tokyo Olympics and you're going to be able to watch Tokyo Olympics. Those get postponed a year. Um, Peacock has a really, really tough time taking off in the United States compared to like Disney Plus and, and some other services. Uh, and then when 2021 rolls around and you tried to watch anything on Peacock, there were a lot of issues that people had uh, being able to find things, the user interface. This time around, the Peacock service was was 100 times better than it was for the Tokyo Games. Mm -hmm. And so this this to me felt like the official launch of peacock that like because of the olympic coverage there was another show that i started watching on peacock um that that and there are other shows that that look interesting um and so we had the kind of the replay on linear things linear channels we had the the peacock kind of like like you did with jim um and so I thought overall the television coverage was it was it was good again it's it's it was great to see these olympic games just kind of shine the way that they did um and, and make you feel good tokyo watching tokyo on it i didn't feel good watching those games yeah because it, it was still mass lockdowns it was still people very very anxious about what was going on mm -hmm. this felt just so this felt like an olympic games should feel um i'm hoping la can, can pick up the torch and, and and do more of that we have a few more things before we get to our our kind of the, rapid questions so sorry oh, just go really ahead. quick is is peacock a subscription do you have to pay for it so there there are tiers there used to be a free level of it um that i think there's no longer a free level for it however i think maybe the during the olympics you could have gotten it for free okay. i think everybody had access during the 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 two or three weeks surrounding the olympics okay um we like my household we have xfinity cable we still have cable. So because we have Xfinity, we have Peacock included because uh, they're all owned by Comcast. Mm -hmm. uh, so a couple a couple things that just real quick before we get into our actual 
graphic questions that look forward to 2028. Uh, what was your favorite event to watch? Holy cow. Or two or three. <laughs> well, I can tell you it wasn't the opening and closing ceremonies. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I enjoyed so much of it. I, I really did. Um, from, I mean, it's hard, really hard to pick pick a favorite. Like you did, the 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 I I'm kind of kicking myself I didn't watch the BMX cross, uh, mm-hmm. that rugby, oh my gosh I just love watching rugby. The, uh, I know in Tokyo they had the rugby sevens and the rugby fives and I preferred watching the rugby fives, and from what I could tell they didn't have the rugby fives at these Olympics, but the rugby sevens was mm-hmm. so cool to watch. Uh, I, I'm not a soccer fan at all, but I really got into the soccer this year. I'm not a basketball okay. fan at all, but I enjoyed watching the basketball. LeBron James, my gosh, that guy's a basketball god. <laughs> Crazy how yeah. good that guy is. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed a lot of things that I don't normally ever watch. Uh, like I said, the archery gold medal, being like after shooting a thousand arrows, it comes down to one arrow and you're off by half a centimeter between silver and gold. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, my favorite things are always swimming. I love watching anything mm-hmm. swimming on. I will watch swimming. Um, and then, as I said, I, I have, I've always really enjoyed watching beach volleyball this year, watching beach yeah. volleyball under like in that setting was the shadow just of the Eiffel tower. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. That was yeah. just, that was so, so cool. So you mentioned missing bmx um and that's before we started recording that's one i said i regret missing Mm -hmm. was there anything else you regret either missing or not watching more of anything you forgot about that you wish you wouldn't have no the bmx cross was one that that i i i i I don't know what happened i just didn't the way i i did it was before i went to bed each night i checked that the schedule was the following day and kind of mm-hmm. knew like what time I have to get up at. So do I got to get up at two in the morning or three in the morning or four in the morning? And I would just set a mental clock to wake myself up at that time and turn on the TV yeah. and start watching. And, and at BMX biking, I saw it was coming on. And for whatever reason, I just, and it wasn't, it wasn't shown on CBC. I would have had to go into the CBC gym. I slipped my mind or whatever, or maybe I fell asleep. A couple of times I fell asleep, but at, you know, at eight in the morning, <laughs> I'm yeah. getting up at two yeah. in the morning. <laughs> It's 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 a it's yeah. a, an Olympic sport watching the Olympics. <clears throat> it's it's a marathon sport. You know, you're two weeks <laughs> sitting down watching. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's tiring. It's exhausting on the body. <laughs> so what the the next Olympics are in 2028. They are mm-hmm. closer to both you and I um, than Paris was. What what's one or two sports that you would like to see live? If you could go to the games, I, I think watching the track and field would be really cool uh, to see because you, you've got a bunch of stuff happening kind of at the same time. And you got the decathlon going on, you got the shot put going on, you got the javelin, you got the, the people running the different the different uh, track events. I think that'd be really cool to see. Okay. I don't know how much you see because it's a massive stadium. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you see these little people on the screen on, on the field, and you can kind of, I guess, look at the screen to see what's going on. <laughs> you yeah. Know? If you're at one end of the stadium and the guy's shooting a shot put, do you actually see where the shot put lands? I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm guessing not. <laughs> um, I, um, uh, go ahead. It, anything else? Any other event? I mean, I'd like to see it all, and, and that's kind of, kind of the reason why. Like people say to me, you know, it's in LA. You, you you could go to it, you know, you you could fly there. It's so it's a, you know it's easy to do. You can get a hotel, and I'm like, yeah, I could, but you know, I I don't get to see everything. Like I, in, in one day, I can watch sailing, golf, cycling, yeah. skiing, diving, <laughs> you know, BMX, yeah. breaking, uh, trampoline. I could watch all that in one day. If I'm in LA, there's no way in the world I could do that. Yeah. So it's, it's I. It's, hard i i've i've told i've told our boys like you know i i would like to try to go to la 
Uh, that will be the closest it will be to us probably for a long time. Uh, Salt Lake City, it, I think it's going to host the 2034 Winter Olympics um, again. But um, I think it would be really fun. I it, it is It would be difficult to kind of miss out on everything. But I think if I... If I had my pick, money was not an option. I would want to see swimming. Um, I, I would love to watch the swimming events. The uh, what's really interesting about LA is there are renderings. I haven't. I don't know if this is finalized yet or not. But there are renderings that they may possibly hold the swimming events in SoFi Stadium, which is the the big NFL stadium in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. And if they do. They said there could possibly be like 35,000 people or more watching those events. Now, that would be – you said if you're on one side of the track and field stadium, do you see a shot put land? Like, yeah. that's – if you're up at the very top of SoFi Stadium, like, are you going to be able to tell, like, you know, it looks like – it looks like ants swimming. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Ants racing. Well, but I would love to LA, see that. Uh, the gymnastics and basketball are going to be your two hottest tickets. Yeah. You know, yeah. those are going to be the ones that and everybody's going to want to go see. I I think um, I want to see beach volleyball because of, I like watching the sport. I would like to watch indoor volleyball, but beach volleyball also has that party like atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's what I've heard with BMX racing also is there's mm -hmm. a lot of music going on. It's like, a, it's kind of like a music festival. So I think that would be really fun to go and not just not just be able to watch, but you're also like experiencing all of these other things. Now, with with L.A., one of the new sports that is going to be included, baseball will be included again. Yep. And so I would like to go watch baseball. Part of the reason is that will be at Dodger Stadium. Um I'm, I, I'm imagining it will be at Dodger Stadium at least. Um, I haven't been to Dodger Stadium, so that would be pretty cool to go to as well. So now, we talked about the sports we like watching, the ones we would want to watch live. What sport would you like to try to attempt? <laughs> well, see, back in high school, uh, I was in track. Uh, I did the the 400 meter and the 800 meter. Uh, I didn't do well in the 400 meter in my region. Uh, the 800 meter actually made it to provincials. Uh, I came in third okay. in provincials. Uh, had I gotten gold, I probably would have went to national. Uh, I would have got smoked in national. <laughs> but uh, so I, I, I still enjoy watching the 800 meters, but that's not the one I would like to try. I think equestrian would be kind of cool. Yeah. To, to do that, that horse, it looks dangerous. I mean, you fall off those horses. You know, there's yeah. a reason why they're wearing a helmet. Uh, archery, I think, would be cool to try. I, I think that's something that'd be kind of neat. Um, I don't want to do skateboarding or BMX or rock climbing. I, <laughs> I, I know I, I wouldn't suck in all those. I think you mentioned going kayaking, but having it on level one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think yeah. that that's really a sport, but <laughs> uh, if, yeah, I think a question uh, would be kind of neat. And, you, I, and I can do it quick on a question. Hmm? Real quick on equestrian, one of those videos of Martha Stewart and uh, Snoop Dogg, they were talking about equestrian, and Martha Stewart asked Snoop Dogg how much he thought one of those equestrian horses cost. Because they were talking about, like, the I don't know if you heard this in Canada, but the, the plane that they fly, there's one plane that, like, they go and they get the horses from around the world. It's called Equestrian One. Yeah, <laughs> like they that's how they get the the them to the Olympic Games. But so she asked, how much do you think one of those equestrian horses cost? What do you think the figure is? I'm guessing a couple of million. She said around 50 million dollars. Get out. He because Snoop Dogg said he's, he's like, ah, I would think probably three or four million. And yeah. she said a good horse, 50 million dollars. Wow. I'm like, well, that is <laughs> that's not move a over, move over basketball. That's <laughs> the most expensive sport. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think 
the two things that I think I would really like to try, uh, I said the kayak, I just want to, I want it on a level one. And I actually would like to do BMX if I'm by myself, mm-hmm. nobody else is on the track with me and, and I can go as slow as I want to go. I think that would be fun. Now, I think I'd be obviously too there's to go some down of... that hill. I, you go up and then you go down. I think I'd be too scared to go down the hill and around that around that, that corner. Well, <laughs> well, what I was gonna say is, if I'm going slow, I don't know if I would make it up hills. Uh, there well, are some of those that you have to be going a minimum speed to be able to complete. And isn't there um, gaps? So isn't there that, jumps you have to go over too yeah. at, at some point too? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so real quick. Impressions of the closing ceremony. Um, well, before we get to that, I thought it was really, really cool how the medals had a piece of the Eiffel Tower in it. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. You're right. It's kind of a kind of a miscellaneous miscellaneous thing. Um, well, we're still on on, on miscellaneous. Uh, 242 countries had spectators from, like 242 oh. countries. Uh, people came from for spectators. They sold nine and a half million sporting event tickets. For, for these Olympics. Okay. Uh, it's probably one of the most successful Olympics ever, I'm guessing, because it seems like every event was was packed to the gills, other than the few that happened before beforehand. Uh, one million people took to the streets during the uh, marathons to, uh, to watch the marathon. Uh, they got to watch for free. So uh, I just want to kind of mention a couple of those things. It was super cool. Uh, the closing ceremonies. Uh, the parade of flags was really neat. I'm glad they did it the traditional way, where where they where they brought the flags in and then how they brought the athletes in. Uh, I thought that was really cool. You got finally got to see the uniforms which we didn't get to see during the opening ceremonies. That piano they had suspended, kind of going straight up, and the piano player lying on his back. That was crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. That was pretty, pretty intense. Now, how would you like to be the piano player to get that phone call? Uh, we'd like yeah. for you to play the piano during the closing ceremonies. Right? Would you be interested? Oh, yeah, I'd love to do that. Just to let you know, we're going to have the piano straight up, and you're going to be, like, on your back. And he's going to go, yeah. well, I can't, <laughs> I can't picture it, but okay, okay. And we're going to raise the piano up, and it's going to go up probably about 60 feet. <laughs> Are you okay yep. with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be okay. Yeah, I, I think I can do it. And your costume is going to be made out of VHS tape, not not boxes, <laughs> not not the plastic cases, but the actual tape. We're going to have you wearing VHS tape for your costume. Who comes up with this? <laughs> and how did who yeah. tells this guy that, that this is what we're going to do to you? <laughs> the the coolest thing to me about the closing ceremonies was the stage. The way that the stage looked, that it was like the the continents. Yeah. Um, that was cool. Um, I did enjoy. Here's one thing that that really got me about the closing ceremonies. Um, when when they did the bit about the handover to L.A., and so yeah. you have Tom Cruise, like you know, he repelling, prope- repels down, takes the flag, gets on a motorcycle, it flies over to L.A. And then the the part where it shows the Hollywood sign and the mm-hmm. two O's, like you know, there there are three circles above it to make the Olympic rings. Um, that did get me excited for Los Angeles 2028. I had said during the games, I'm like, oh my goodness, like I bet LA wish they could have done the 2024 games before Paris. Like I, I hope this goes as well as Paris did. Seeing that did get me excited for yeah. 2028. It made me think like, okay, like it's there's going to be a lot of high production. I wonder how many entertainment studios are going to be involved in it. This this mm-hmm. could be something that's that's really really cool. So before we get to our rapid questions, um, one thing I did look up by my count, I think there were eight. There was 88 countries that won a medal. Okay. Including the first medal for the refugee Olympic team. That's the first oh. time that someone from the Olympic refugee team has won an Olympic medal. So that was pretty cool. Um, so anything that you think we we have missed in our discussion before we get to looking forward to 2028? 
the the uh well you mentioned the closing ceremonies in the stage uh i i thought that was amazing too they had that big metal at the beginning that did nothing during the they they just took it away once the show started (laughs) i didn't understand that uh and like like you said once the americans kind of took over once when tom cruise took over the 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 flame and or the flag sorry all that was good you got the red hot chili peppers uh billy eilish and snoop dogg performing on the beach in l.a uh, all all that stuff like you said gets you very excited for the next Olympics. Um, yeah, yeah. That any... that song Californication did, did yeah did the Red Hot Chili Peppers song that that did a lot. So yeah, uh, hardly any fireworks at all. This is a little bit at the end, yeah. which was surprising. And I, I guess they can't do it above people, but Disneyland Paris does such an amazing job with drone shows. I was kind of expecting to see a drone show at these at these uh olympics you know forming mm-hmm. the rings or whatever and i guess i get it if a drone bangs into another drone and falls and it lands on somebody yeah yeah that's probably not good so <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i i get it but i was expecting to see a drone show somehow maybe above the, the, the scene river or something mm-hmm. you know if it falls into the water it's not so bad you know um to me the takeaway is seeing the iconic Eiffel Tower each night or over the Olympic, I'm sorry, over the beach volleyball stadium all the time. But Mm -hmm. each night when NBC would sign off, that's what it would show. Uh, It was so cool seeing that lit up with the Olympic rings. Yeah, Uh, that was. And, and the way that they ended their coverage last night, one of the things they did was the, the Eiffel Tower went dark and, and it went dark in segments. Like, uh, the top part went dark and then like part of the lower left and lower right. Like that was pretty cool to where it showed the that. Olympic rings at the end. That. Yeah. Um, that was, that's what will, that's what will stay with me is these, I, I've said it a few times already. These just felt like the Olympic games that like we really, really needed um, coming off of, like you said, eight years from seeing a summer Olympic games that had spectators, you yeah. know, uh, I mean, it was such bad luck for Tokyo 2020 to, to have those Olympic games. And they did, they did an amazing job. They did the best they could. Mm-hmm. It was just very, very unfortunate. Um, these felt really, really good to see. So yeah. 2028, as we've said a few times is going to be in Los Angeles. The Walt Disney Company, who we both share a strong fondness for, is based out of Los Angeles. Um, I wondered if Disney was going to have anything to do with the Paris games. It didn't seem like they did. Yeah. In in the United States, and and we're coming off of, you know, Disney has has a. Um, presence a theme park presence in tokyo for the 2020 games they have a presence in paris for the 2024 games and then they have a, a presence a very strong presence with parks and the headquarters in los angeles disney has when the games have been hosted in the united states um starting in 1960 disney had a very strong presence with the 1960 winter games being in charge of pageantry that's why we See the type of opening ceremonies that we do now. Disney was really the first to to do the opening ceremony that big. They were one of the first to have the idea to, um, at the end of the day, they did all of the medal ceremonies in one place. And so that made it a little easier for for televising those uh, medal ceremonies. 1960 Summer and Olympic Games were also the first Olympics that were televised. Um, so they had a strong presence there. They had a strong presence in the 1984 games. So I thought for our kind of rapid questions, and we'll both answer these, what type of, we'll talk about what type of presence Disney will have in the games for 2028. So that's the first question. How much involvement do you think the Walt Disney Company is going to have for the Los Angeles games? So so in 84, uh, I believe it was 84, uh, Los Angeles games. Um, Disney did an awful lot. Uh, they mm-hmm. kind of took control of ticket sales. 
they, they, they knew how to handle pick, ticket sales. They knew how to handle large groups of people and, 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 and moving people around and whatnot. Uh, and they, they were involved in that. They, they were involved with the designing of the mascot. It was the mm -hmm. first ever digital mascot. And the Disney animation kind of was the ones that created and made the mascot for, for those games. Um, I don't know how much they'll do this go round. They seem to have a lot on their plate already. <laughs> And I'm not sure if they still have the same relations that they had back then with the IOC. Um, and, I, and I guess it's more the LA Olympic Committee that would have to come to them yeah. versus the International Olympic Committee that would come to them, you know, asking for advice or for help or whatever. It, it'd be interesting to see how much Disney actually does do. Because it's like, if they're going to have stuff at Dodger Stadium, well, Dodger Stadium knows how to handle crowds. You know, uh, they have that 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 big uh, Olympic stadium in LA. They know how to handle crowds. They know how to handle parking. They know how to handle uh, ticket sales. It, it's, it's a lot easier now than it probably was in '84 with with computers and, and whatnot. I don't. I think it's gonna be pretty minimal. That that Disney. Be so, more. What do you think? Am I am I way off? Were you thinking it's gonna be more? I think there's gonna be a. I think they will have something to do with entertainment. I could see them having something to do with okay. the opening ceremonies again. I, I think what's interesting that you said about like crowd control, ticket sales, moving people around so much of just what we know in entertainment and like sports entertainment comes from lessons people have learned from Disney crowd mm -hmm. control, moving people around. So much of that comes from Disney. So in a way, I guess you could say like there's always this, you know, Disney presence, but because of the lessons that have been learned, yeah, they might not be needed for things like that. I could see them be still being involved with things like that because they are constantly, you know, getting better. <laughs> Part of me thinks it would be really funny if, what if, what if before the twenty or for the twenty twenty eight games. There is a uh, a version of Lightning Lane or Genie Plus that comes out, a G, like a like a LA. Well, I don't know what you call it. It'd be like the equivalent of LA Genie to tell you like, hey, traffic's light here. Get to this yeah. venue this way. Like that would be pretty funny. Well, um, like nobody could put masking tape down on the ground like Disney can. <laughs> <laughs> We're controlling lines and making yeah. breaking cues on the spot. So. Uh, I, I think, you know, I think there will be an entertainment presence. That being said, I also think it's going to be a, you know, I think other entertainment companies have seen what Disney did with 1984 in particular. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're going to, there's going to be a lot of, you, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, people out for this. There's going to be a lot of studios helping. Universal has a, obviously a very strong tie since they're the ones NBC carries it and carries the Olympic Games in the United States. So maybe Universal will have more of a presence. I'm not really sure, but um, I'm hoping Disney has a strong presence because yeah. it's it, it, it's always better when they do. It's always more fun to talk about. Um, so the second question. Remember, the company used to make like the, the animated shorts mm -hmm. about different sports. I should last time we talked, I showed you one with touchdown Mickey that I a poster I have. Um, what animated short of a more recent Olympic event would you like see to see be made by the Walt Disney Company? I mean, I think Goofy did one for gymnastics a yeah. while back, but I think gymnastics is so huge now. Uh, especially in the U.S., that I, I think that would be, for market for, for stand of view point of view, that would be the one to go with, is, is yeah. to make an animated short on, on gymnastics, kind of explaining the rules and 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 whatnot, uh, getting kids interested in the sports of the next generation, mm -hmm. and start moving up. I think uh, I think that one would be a good one. I I would like to see one on beach volleyball because I like beach volleyball. I think it won't be in the L it won't be in the LA games. I think it would be a very funny animated short to have one about breaking. I think that would be 
they would do some really, really fun things for that. And just real quick, so for reference points, everybody listening or watching understands. Let me find where. So the five new sports that are being added for LA 2028, because other cities get to choose sports to include in the Olympic program that aren't necessarily part of the Olympic program. So the five that are going to be included in LA, baseball and softball are going to be included again. They're not in, they're no longer in the official Olympic program, but they were included in Tokyo because Japan wanted them. They're going to be included in LA. Um, so we have baseball, softball. Then we have lacrosse, cricket. They're both returning to the Olympic program. And for the first time, flag football and squash will be included in the Olympics. So they're making their Olympic debut in 2028. So that's just, just for reference. Um, so people know what is coming up. So if D Disney loves making inspirational movies, especially about the Olympics, they've done it with Miracle. They've done it with now uh, Eddie the Eagle through acquisitions. They did it with Cool Runnings. If Disney made a movie about a contestant or an inspirational story about the 2024 Olympic Games, what would it be or what would you like it to be? Yeah, I think the smart choice is to go with uh, Simone Biles. That's, yeah. yeah. That that, would be, that I, would be the smart choice. I definitely could see that as well. Uh, yeah. Well, well I'm, I'm surprised that wasn't announced at D23. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 uh, I, the, the, she did do a uh, documentary series on Netflix. I'm not sure if you- Okay, yeah, that yeah, that she did. Yeah, it was two episodes yeah. long um, and very well done. She talks all about her, her hardships and, and coming back into the sport and whatnot. Yeah, I think her story has, a, it's a great story for being able to do that. I also could see, um, again, I, I'm not going to try his first name, Marshawn, the French swimmer. I can yeah. see that um, mm -hmm. being a, a really good story. All right, the next one. What? What Olympic event do you think would make a good Disney Parks attraction? So if the Imagineers were going to, to build an attraction, design one after an Olympic event, what do you think it would be? Wow. <laughs> uh, I think cross kayak would it, kind of be cool where oh, you're on a track and it takes you you know through through the things and and you go side by side against another another kayak yeah and you don't know who yeah that would be cool. gonna be um that would be that would be a fun one um i'm not sure how serious i am with this one but uh speed climbing up uh up maybe the matterhorn or uh <laughs> i guess you would probably have to do like up guardians of the galaxy mission re <laughs> mission breakout um but I, the side of that. <laughs> I i do i do agree i think i think kayaking would be really really cool i could see uh bmx or skateboarding because those are ones that especially skateboarding you're you're kind of spinning around things like that i think they could do some things with that um okay so in 2028 there's no plan so far but let's say the LA organizing committee chooses to have an event. They hold it at Disneyland or Disney California Adventure. What's it going to be? Okay. So this is kind of a go with me here. Uh, but the Cars Land uh, Radiator Racers, the track, it's, it's like you see people running, running track and it's a flat track. Uh, they do marathons and it's different types of structures and whatnot. But how cool would it be to see Olympic athletes running around radiator racers, uh, going up and down <laughs> the, the, the hills and the humps and all that, or you know, uh, doing just, doing that? Yeah, I'm not sure how long. Just avoiding avoiding the avoiding the hole in the track where the cars attach. You, you don't. Well, want, they can fill it in. You somehow. don't want broken ankles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, walking down Main Street, um, you gotta avoid the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you, you know they angry. remember they did was it 2008 i can't remember they had an olympic swimming pool built on main street usa and disneyland um if you remember that i don't um, remember that at all and they had michael michael phelps and some other olympic swimmers they they had an olympic day 
Um, that was pretty cool. That was, that was, so that would be something that would be pretty cool to watch. Now you wouldn't be able to have an eight lane, uh, pool. Um, yeah. but that was pretty fun to watch. The thing I was actually thinking, um, was how cool would it be going with radiator Springs racers? It would be really cool to see the Olympic climbing competition, either on the mm. radiator Springs racers mountain or, mm-hmm. Or the Matterhorn, one of yeah. the. I mean, you know, they they used to have somebody climb up the Matterhorn on a daily yeah. basis. So those would be pretty cool. Um, all right, two more. Ridge. What? Um, all right. So I'll probably have to read this one and explain a little bit more. But what regular activity that Disney fans engage in could be an Olympic event? So, for example, it would be like rope drop or lightning lane booking or something like that what regular what a what thing that regular disney fans do would make a good olympic event mickey bar eating on a hot day <laughs> <laughs> you have to suck it, it would back be like speed helps. climbing <laughs> speed eating it would be speed like <laughs> yeah you you have to you have to eat it in less than five seconds it, either that or um or uh, Dole Whip, those things melt pretty quickly as yeah. well. Yeah. So, yeah. You, yeah. so speed you gotta, eating. Yeah, you got to speed eat. <laughs> you speed eat your Mickey bar before it melts. If any of the chocolate touches the ground, you're disqualified. <laughs> you bite I, into it and it shatters. <laughs> I would like to see a type of Disney marathon, or I guess you would probably you'd actually probably call it a Disney heptathlon or or um uh. Now, now I can't remember the, the one that's ten, the the name of that. Um, the decathlon. But decathlon, yes, thank you. A Disney heptathlon or decathlon, where you include things like speed eating a Dole Whip or Mickey ice cream bar. You include, you have to rope drop, and you have to be within the first fifty people on a ride. You have to book your lightning lanes in an efficient manner and you're getting judged on things like that um i think it would be really really oh and you add in the park hopping option you have to park hop start in disneyland go to california adventure you have to see the the nighttime show at california adventure and then make it back for the nighttime show and park (laughs) closing at um, disneyland and to throw in for good measure you have to ride the monorail um around the disney property to the disneyland hotel downtown disney and all of that i think that would be a fun event to it would it would definitely be one that would be tape uh tape delayed um but it would be fun and it would be fun to compete in for my well we already do compete in that right. one every time we go we're, we're competing in that one <laughs> yeah we that's you know that's what here's the idea that's what disney should do they should give out medals for when you do that, everybody should be, everybody should get um, an Olympic or a Disney medal, which reminds me, actually, when they had the swimming pool on Main Street, um, the medals were in the shape of Mickey. So you had the medal mm-hmm. and then two ears on top of it. So it was pretty well, they, fun. They kind of do that Last, in some regard. I mean, like, like with the person that gets the first pickle of the day, they get a, they get a sticker. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or if you if you get the um, the perfect score. What is it? The one million points, or yeah. one, however many it is, in in um, the the shooting the, games. The light, uh, Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger spin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You you get you get the sticker for that. So they kind of do have have that already, where you get the the the, the in, in some events. Yeah. Last one. Of the sensational six, so everybody watching. Uh, knows Sensational Six. We're referring to Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, Daisy Duck, Goofy, and Pluto. Of the Sensational Six, who would be most likely to get an Olympic medal and in what event? Well, you would think Pluto being a dog would outrun anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you put a hundred yeah. meters between a dog and a mouse <laughs> or a duck. <laughs> Who's going to win? <laughs> or a goofy? So, <laughs> so you, you have Pluto and track Pluto. You Pluto. have Pluto and track and field. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Listen I mean, to this I, one. I think if you're going to do like something like, uh, like, uh, high jump, I think goofy has the advantage. So here's the thing. Goofy has notoriously been very uh, uncoordinated, right? Mm -hmm. That's what makes all of those shorts of his funny. Yeah. However, he also has the most practice because yeah. he has more shorts, more sports shorts uh, with him and them than anyone else. Plus, and plus he doesn't give up. That's true. No he does how not many give times up. he fails, he keeps trying. Donald Duck fails once, he's going to lose his mind. Yep. <laughs> you know what I so, mean? I think Goofy could win. I think he could win in climbing. Not speed climbing. Well, no, no, no. Maybe speed climbing. Yeah. But then, obviously, he would fall, have the Wilhelm yet scream on the way down. But I think he would... I think he could do that and the combined event. Um, mm -hmm. Because... He, he does not give up, and he has long ears, and I think he could drip one of those ears to those to those holds <laughs> as well. That I think he would do very well. So, I don't think he has much muscle uh, in those ears. I don't, he, he have to he have to he have to work on that to work out. Um, all right, so Stan, thanks for doing this. Um, we have we've gone over everything with the the 2024 recap. Um, I'm looking forward to 2028 to see what's going to happen in LA. I'm looking forward to 2026 to see what's going to happen in Milan with the winter games. Um, for anybody who wants to follow you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, well, Stan solo on, on Facebook, I guess. I don't really do too much on the Twitter or, or the X um, or the Instagram, but I don't really accept too many friends. Um, I'm kind of being more particular on, on who I accept friends with. So the solo show would be good if you're interested in listening to the podcast. Grand Sickle Tour has all sorts of fun uh, Disney posts. Every day we post some kind of trivia or, or something like that on, on the Grand Sickle Tour. So those those would be the, the good ones. Instagram Grand Sickle Tour is on fire. Uh, Holly's, okay. Holly and Dan are, are posting stuff like, like we're getting millions of views on our Instagram. Oh, on okay. our Grand Sickle cool. Tour. Yeah. And then I do well, a live show every Monday on, on yep. the solo show on YouTube. Yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And, and we kind of do pop culture. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has Disney, but it's not only Disney. Uh, like we'll talk about the big, big gross, grossing movies of the week, what we watched for the week. And uh, just entertainment news is kind of what we cover on that. It's, a lot, of, it's yeah. a lot of fun. We do it every Monday night on the solo show on YouTube. So... Listen to listen to the solo show, Grand Circle Tour podcast. Watch the Monday night show. Um, it's really, really cool. You also see what my inner dialogue is talking about with how good Stan is at plugging his shows um, compared to me. Uh, so, Stan, thanks a lot. This was a lot of fun. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too.